Okay friends, it's time to get ready to start installing our lower transmission cooler line. One of the first things we want to make sure is we have a nice collection bucket underneath the passenger side of the radiator. We're going to be disconnecting the line. We want to make sure we can recycle that fluid. Now for me personally, I like to remove the battery and the tray for this. You don't necessarily need to. You'll just kind of have to squeeze your hands down into a tight area if you don't. And if you're not removing your battery, at least disconnect the negative battery terminal. To start, I'm going to remove my negative battery terminal and then I'll remove my positive. After that, we'll re remove the battery from the truck. Straight down behind the battery, you're going to find your battery hold down mounting nut. Let's go ahead and remove that. Now let's remove the battery hold down as well. Set those aside. Now we can grab the battery and remove it. Now the next thing we're going to do is remove this battery tray. You're going to find two more mounting bolts, one right here and one located right there. Remove the pair and then we'll get the tray right out of here. Set this aside. Here's the upper line and the fitting so you have an idea what it looks like. If you were to just follow that down right underneath this low radiator hose, you'll find the lower one. Now with the battery and everything out of the way, it makes it very easy for me to access. What I need to do is get in between the black cover and the little copper that you can see. And we're just going to slide that black cover out of the way and that'll expose the clip that's behind it. Now I'm going to use a pick and I'm going to try to get in between the clip and the copper adapter itself and try to separate the metal clip from the adapter so I can remove the line. There's our clip, set that aside. Now that we have the clip off of there, let's go ahead and grab onto the line, give it a nice wiggle and separate it from the radiator. Once that's loose, let's get under the truck. Now underneath the truck, the first thing we need to do is remove our rearward splash shield. There's gonna be four mounting bolts. Go ahead and remove all of them and then get it out of the way. For ours, this one's stripped, so I'll just turn this. Now with that shield out of the way, we have a clear view of our transmission cooler lines. You're going to notice that you have a bracket right here holding the lines on. And then if you were to follow the lines forward, you're going to have another bracket. This one's just plastic. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the nut that's holding this one on, and then we'll do the plastic one over there. With that out of the way, let's continue on by removing this mounting stud. There's our stud and bracket. We'll set that aside. Now let's move forward to the front clip. I'm just going to use a pick, try to get inside this area here so I can separate it and relieve the lines. There we are. We'll get the clip out of the way. Now we can move back to the transmission. So let's just follow that lower line all the way up along the transmission. I marked it with yellow up along here and you can see where it mates up against the transmission. It's going to have the same type of clip as we removed on the radiator. So just go ahead and do the same process as we did for that. It's going to be easiest to access this with a nice long pick. It's going to come right up along the transmission. I'll remove that plastic retainer. There we are. We'll slide that out of the way. Now the next thing we need to do is remove the little clip from inside there. So just go ahead and find one of the edges, peel it off of there, and then remove the clip. Now with the black plastic off of there, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the clip. I'm just going to grab onto one of these ears, carefully start pulling it down. Once it starts coming away, try to grab onto it with a magnet of some sort so you don't necessarily go flinging it off into the abyss. Now the next thing we need to do is get the line out of there. I'm just going to use a nice long pry bar, get in between the transmission and the line, and I'm going to gently pry it away.
Okay, now that we have the line out of the transmission, we can continue on by trying to remove the line from the truck. To do that, I'm just going to carefully try to grab onto it and draw it down. What you're going to notice is you have, of course, your transmission that's going to be in the way and the exhaust. So there's going to be a little bit of maneuvering that's going to be involved. As I bring this down, I'm also going to try to push it forward towards the radiator. Obviously, we want to be very careful not to damage anything up front, but we do need some slack so we can hopefully get it down between this area. Now, the next thing I like to do is come right up inside the passenger side wheel well, right up along the radiator. If you feel up along here, you're going to be able to find the line that you disconnected from the radiator. Just bring it out and around this side. After that, I just want to gently give it a couple tugs and just try to bring it this way. If it feels as though it's jammed, come down along the transmission and try to ensure that it's not stuck on something along there. Now I'm just going to bring this down, let it drain into my collection bucket, and then we'll remove it from the truck. There it is, friends. Okay, friends, now that we have the line out of there, the next thing we want to continue on by doing is inspecting the hole that we removed it from. We're going to clean it, and then we're going to put our clip back in. Together, I want to show you how to put the clip in. There's going to be three little holes in this. So essentially, I'm just going to line up one of the ends with one of the holes, bring it around, and then put it in just like that. Once you hear it click in, you should be good to go. So now that we have our clip in our transmission, we're going to move along to getting ready to install our line. Obviously, I don't want any dirt or debris to make its way inside the line, so I'm just going to use some electrical tape and wrap it up nice and good, and then I'll do the same to the other side. Just use a little bit of electrical tape, cover up the end of it, and then wrap it around a few times. We'll do the same to both ends. Now this is going to be the direction that you want your transmission cooler line to be. We have the abrupt angle that comes up like this that's going to lead to the transmission, and then we have the one that kind of goes straight along and leads down to the radiator. Now I'm just going to get started by coming right up through this area here, and then we'll bring it up and along the front. Rest it right here for a second, down underneath the exhaust. Now I'm going to go up inside the wheel well and help it up along that way. Just bring it up and along this area. Now we can just grab that line. I'm going to help it down and underneath the other line and then in between the exhaust and transmission. We'll get it up to approximately where it needs to be at the clip and then we can remove our tape and get ready for our install. So now I'm just going to press on that line into the transmission so hopefully it'll click in. Listen for a nice click. Once you feel as though it's latched in, you definitely want to give this a whole bunch of nice tugs. You want to ensure that it's completely clipped in. After you've given it a couple tugs, take a look at that clip. If it looks like the clip looks like it wants to fall out of there or it's being pushed away from the actual adapter itself, that means the line isn't in all the way. Once you're sure that the line's completely in and the clip's situated perfectly, we're going to continue on to putting on the plastic retainer. Just push on that plastic retainer. That ensures that the clip can't fall off on its own. I'm going to give it one last wiggle just to ensure it's completely in. Now let's get back up to where it connects onto the radiator. At the radiator, let's go ahead and put our clip on for the transmission line. All right. Now that the clip's in, let's put in our line. Give it a nice press, listen for a click, and then give it a tug. All right, just heard that click in. I'm going to give it a nice tug. Oh, yeah, that's going nowhere. We'll put on the black retainer. Perfect. Now we're going to put our transmission line bracket on there. We have our stud that's going to go through. The lines are going to come like this along it, and then of course we'll tighten up the stud. All right, so I've got that bottomed out. I'm just going to give it a little bit more. I want to, of course, ensure that these are nice and snug, so I'm going to wiggle them around, but I don't necessarily need to crush them down in any way. Now let's go ahead and put our wiring back on there, and then we'll put on the mounting nut for that as well. All right, that's bottomed out. Let's move along to the plastic clip. To put this on, I'm just going to place it upside down. As long as it's holding lines, it's fine. By doing it this way, I can use some pliers and latch it in. Just click that in. Make sure it's nice and secure. Perfect. Let's get our skid shield back up. Let's 
get our battery tray back in here. It should sit over this stud right here. Then we'll line up our two other bolts, start those in and snug them up. Now let's put our battery in. Looking down along this way, you can see a little hooky do on the battery tray. And then if you were to look at the battery, it's gonna have a nub that comes out of it. You wanna make sure that the battery sits underneath that hooky do of the tray. There we are. Now we can continue on to putting on our battery mounting point. We've got these two pieces. You want the metal bracket to go along the top. Slide that over the stud, grab your nut, start that on there, and then we'll snug it up. Grab your battery, make sure it's secured. Now it's gonna be time to put on the battery terminal ends. Start with your positive, get that nice and snug, and then do the negative. Double check everything's nice and secure. Perfect, now let's check our transmission fluid. Now to check and fill your transmission fluid, you're gonna come right here to the dipstick. If you were to pull on this, you can unlatch it and then bring it right straight up. At this point, you just want to take a quick peek at it and inspect it. Go ahead and dip it back in, pull it back out, and inspect it. Make sure you have some fluid in there. It should be up above the full line. After that, go ahead and start up your truck. With the truck running, take a peek underneath. Make sure you don't have any fluid leaks. Let it run till it's at operating temperature, and then recheck it. Now, after you've run the truck and the transmission's at normal operating temperature, you want to double check the fluid. Make sure it's inside this hatched area right here. If it looks like it's low, maybe someplace down around this area, that means you have to add fluid. When you add fluid, make sure you use Dextron 6 transmission fluid. 